the very last uh, scene uh, of the uh, the Ron Livingston behind the scenes thing, when Ca- uh, Captain Die does his last uh, sound off. Yep. The speech that he gives at that moment in time, uh, I'm almost certain that that was probably the greatest speech he's ever given a group of actors. Yeah, he's the dude. He allowed himself to be the common enemy. And by doing so, it made us so tight as a group. I mean, we'd go out to restaurants. Here, here's a bunch of guys, that, young guys with you know, a bunch of 20s in their pockets, you know, in London all together. You know, and it's like, we go to a restaurant. I remember one night we were at Nobu. I'm like, yeah, I took my, my, my girlfriend and my wife to, to Nobu. I'm like, okay, it's a sushi restaurant. It's cool. It's expensive. But what the heck? Let's just give it a try. And we walk in there, and you know, seven or eight of the guys are in there. And as, as I walked in, and this was four or five months into filming, as I walked in, you know, it was Matty Owen and Luz and a bunch of the guys. They all stood up in the middle of Nobu, you know, and, you know, Ted John, and they snapped this beautiful salute to me in, in front of everyone and then went back and, you know, carry on, boys, and went back to, to, to their food. And, you know, and then, you know, then we just started to laugh and then we got bombed and had a great old time. But it was, you know, people there, like, what, who, what the heck is that? And what that was is Captain Dale Dye brainwashing every single one of us into believing that if we do this right, we will make history. And he was right. And, and you know, you know I, I love that guy more than I could possibly tell you. And, and he's, he's, uh, he, he's something else. Yeah, he, uh, he, as a motivational speaker, I've watched him on uh, TEDx from uh, Mills Theater. He tells these managers mm-hmm. to stop doing this. Uh, and stop managing because you're not doing it right. You can't push a rope. You know you have to lead by example. You have to be in the front and you know, everything else that you, you're sitting back going, yeah, you know, you know what? If people in business actually listened to guys like this, we wouldn't be uh, so yeah. scru- so screwed up now. He actually he yeah. also brought up in that same talk a couple of uh, things that uh, I thought was pretty funny. He said that Hollywood is probably the most closed-looped, arrogant, nepotistic society that I can't describe. And I just giggled when he said that. He also said that actors are the yeah, most he's, he's, pampered, spoon-fed individuals in the world. Well, I was never one of those because my, my old man and my four older brothers would kick my butt if I, if I ever became that. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm one of those guys, you pay me a dollar, I'm going to give you two dollars worth of effort. Right. So, you know, you know Elle and I are, are so similar in so many ways. So I, I was never that that way, but you know, I've almost taken up the torch of you know, you know. There's a great thing on Minority Report. You know, Stephen always said, you know, the best tip for an actor is never be you know further than fifty feet away from Video Village. You know, the monitors where all the directors and producers all sit around and watch the monitors and the playbacks and all that kind of stuff. Because you never know when you might you know the director might want you, and if you have to run all the way to a trailer, get you ready. There's fifteen minutes of time, and that's a, lots about you know that's a you know good chunk of money that we're sitting around wasting. So if you're always there, you're always in the ready. As Captain Dale Dice also said, we all had our own trailers for, for Ben and Brothers for 10 months. All of us. I think we all probably saw our trailers maybe three times. We were all near the set, and we are all like kind of in the area, and you know, there's a tent that they had for us that was, you know, would lift weights and all that kind of stuff and hang out and shoot the shit and stuff. But we're always right there on the ready. And, and, and he probably, you know, learned a lot of that from, from Stephen because he's worked with you know, Stephen so many times. But, you know, also, if you're near the monitor, you're seeing what works and what doesn't work. You're seeing when people act correctly, and not just the acting, but acting, you know, as humans, you know, around the set, and you know, people being, you know, pampered and jerky and silly and stupid and whiny, you'll learn, wow, that looks dumb, doesn't it? Much more than watching, you know, and also watching great acting and seeing what works, but, you know, how, how to really hold yourself as a man in, in life and, you know, on a set and what the right things to do. And I think that the, the reason I... I get hired so much to do so many movies is that I have a really great reputation of being just one of those guys who's going to knock out of the ball yard but never be difficult and, and, and always be there and ready to rock and roll and, and, and have fun because at the end of the day, the thing that most people in Hollywood forget, this is supposed to be fun. You know, it's not supposed to be torturous. You know, it's not supposed to be some arduous task of showing up, oh my gosh, I have to do a movie today. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I have to you pretend know? to be somebody else. Yeah, you know, my, my best friend back home, Mark Weller, Pi, you know, he's he's back home right now you know and he's 50 this year and he's landscaping and he's you know busting his ass landscaping in the winter time you know if he has to do some framing he'll do that and you know whatever the case is and make hardly any money and you know that you know but he's happy you go to LA dude there's so much moaning about this and that and whining and I don't have really have a lot of 
you know pals who are actors. My only pals who are actors are you know pretty much the guys in Band of Brothers who you know I love and I die for. Your uh, re- reputation has preceded you on all of this stuff, and especially with uh, after talking with all the Band of Brothers guys, Matthew Leach did say that uh, it would be uh, not close. You would be like the king of all cage fighters out of all of them. With Matteo coming in second and or maybe third, depending on how bad of a whipping you put on Kudlitz. Yeah, well, he's right. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd simple Matteo in first. It was, it was a great day. I was sitting there. Actually, in one of the days, was uh, I was in my trailer. And, and this is probably why. I was sitting there. It was so it was boiling that day. And we were running all over the place. And you know, I, I went back to you. Know, we, had, we had a little time off. So I went back and I lied in my trailer. My door was wide open. And you know it was it was practical joke time. You know if you were in your trailer, you know if you you because you, you wouldn't even change in your trailer. There was this massive, huge canvas area with a tent that all our you know you know stuff and w- would be in, and we'd change. It wouldn't even change in our trailer, so you, you really had no reason to go to your trailer. So <laughs> I'm sitting there lying down, you know, and I've got my shirt off, and I've just got my my pants and my boots on. I'm just boiling. I'm just boiling, and uh, out of the blue. Matteo comes, jumps on top of me, and bites my chest. And I'm not talking bites my chest. I'm talking sink his teeth into my chest like a Rottweiler. Literally. And I'm, I'm, I'm a strong bastard. I'm literally punching his head as hard as he can. And while I'm hitting him, he's laughing. And I'm just punching him, punching him, punching him. Finally gets off, and there's blood on my chest. He gets out, and he's running, laughing his face off. And I'm chasing him with blood on my chest. I, I, I cut him. And some guy's like, what are you chasing Jimmy for, you big bully? What are you chasing Jimmy for? <laughs> and I'm, I'm chasing him all over the place. They can't catch the bastard because he's so fast. And I'm, I'm like, I'm going to kill you, Matteo. I'm going to kill you. Finally, I got him, and I dragged him. There's these things called thistles. They're like uh, like in the grass. They're like these little thorny things that stick in you, and you can, you got to get a tweezers to pull them out. And I finally grabbed him by the nape of the neck and the, by his pants and I'm lifting him in the air dragging him through the thistles all over his chest and all over his back and everybody's like what the heck are you doing to Jim I turn around I'm like I'm bleeding on my boob what do you think <laughs> everybody says like oh and, and they just it was just like and, and then Jimmy and I just sat there laughing our and we tell the story all the time we're laughing our faces off and, and anytime I go someplace I'll be standing there and Jimmy will look at me and I'll look at him and at some point within the first minute one of us is going to throw the first punch, and it's usually Jimmy, and it's usually me leave black and blue all over my arms and shoulders because of Jimmy Matty. He, he put this punch on me. Cheapers, creepers. I mean, he hit me so hard, and then it was, but it felt so good because it came from Jimmy Matteo. <laughs> Love that guy. We're twisted. Yeah, we're twisted. We're not right in the head. Now, uh, you, uh, right. you, didn't, you weren't part of that whole, uh, well, several of them apparently, uh, scraps down at the uh, local pub, were you? With uh, Matteo and the rest of the gang, um, I, it was it was that was me and Jimmy. Uh, who it, it was uh, so Jimmy's getting in the fight, and I have to get in there. And all of a sudden, I'm fighting this guy, in, you know, in London, the streets of London, and and I'm like, oh jeepers, what am I doing? And, you know, I'm, and and I'm not, you know, this guy's swinging. He has a bottle, and he swings a bottle at me, and I block, and I grab the guy, and I wrestle him to the ground. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? I'm you know, gonna kill me. And, and Jim was standing across, and I'm, you know, I've got this guy that comes at me again. I'm back at him. You know, I don't want to punch this guy. You know, I don't want. That's just dumb. I don't, I don't like that kind of stuff. And all, all of a sudden, I look around. I'm like, "Where's Jimmy?" And and uh, you know, I, I'm racing down the streets, thinking that somebody got to, like the cops got Jimmy and so on and so forth. I'm running around, and and uh, Reve was there with me, and she grabs me. But she's six foot three, and she's probably tougher and stronger than all of us. She grabs me by the neck and goes, "What the hell are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm looking for Jimmy," and she's like, "Jimmy." Jimmy, he's gone. What do, I'm like, what do you mean he's gone? He's gone. I call him on his cell phone. I'm like, dude, where are you? I'm running all over this place looking for him. And he's laughing his ass off. And he goes, I know, I saw you. That was awesome. I'm in bed. <laughs> <laughs> I went, because we live in the same complex, I went back there that night, banged on that door, and just, I just beat the crap out of him. It was awesome. 